welcome to our edition of Spotlight On. Well, another hot and sticky weekend, but it was a very beautiful weekend. I was up to Lime Rock this past week, and I had a fantastic time. Um, got to see a lot of people I haven't seen in a while. Uh, we go up every year, myself and uh, John Constantina, um, and we always have a great time up there. What was the best thing was... Um, I got to go into the pits this year thanks to uh, some passes that Don Clady had given me for the Connecticut, from the Connecticut Cruise News. I was able to, uh, you know, I was able to get the photographer, uh, videographer pass, was able to go right down into the pits, talk to the drivers, you know, mingle with them. And I had a, there was, there was a blast. I mean, I just had a fantastic time with it. Um, the Connecticut Cruise News is uh, out each and each and every couple of weeks, and uh, Don has a great paper. So please uh, pick it up at. Uh, there's countless places around town to uh, find it, um, or you can go to ConnecticutCruiseNews.com, look up all information on upcoming events. Uh, but to be get back to the uh, racing, I had it was qualifying all day. They had we had the um, uh, the cars that were running in the like the Bush East there or the Camping World East I should say and uh, uh, you know I got to interview uh, Scott Bully who's uh, you know uh, right up from Thompson Connecticut and uh, Th- uh, George's uh, excuse me his father George Bully used to race at the Danbury Race Arena many many years ago. And um, also, the, this is also, you'll see tonight, the first time at Lime Rock, the Modifieds to be, uh, to, uh, to be running there this year. They were doing qualifying all day. A few, you know, a few, uh, uh, a few accidents, you know, off the track and stuff. We caught everything on video, so we'll be showing you all that tonight as well. Uh, we also got some interviews with um, uh, drivers from, uh, who drive in the circuit for the uh, the uh, modifieds and um, it brought back so many memories of the Danbury race, race arena for me anyway that uh, it was just a wonderful day uh, fr- my friend who's also on the uh, Sun New York uh, Racing Association Committee uh, uh, G. Mel Nero he did the interviews and he was having a blast doing that so I was doing the camera work and you know we're going to show you that tonight as well we um speaking of the sun york racing association on the 25th of this month we will be at western connecticut state university's west side campus for the uh, ninth annual uh reunion and um we should have a, a real, really nice day for that we'll, we'll have cars from uh from the old race arena. We'll have um, drivers signing autographs all day. We will also be having a um, a memorabilia section from not only the Danbury Race Arena but from um, uh, the Danbury Fair. Also we'll have um, cars from other tracks as well. And also um, the guys from the Dover uh, Drag Strip Reunion are going to bring in their show up with them as well. So we should have a really beautiful day for, you know, for all this. So please come out. Um, it's from 11 to 4. We plan on having a, um, a lot of, you know, a lot of people come out for this. And um, please come out. You can relive a lot of memories from days gone by. And uh, it's um, something that, you know, it, unfortunately after some people like myself, you know, are gone and you know we're losing drivers each day you know uh we won't you know it's just going to be gone and then it'll be forgotten you know like like so many other uh great things in danbury um speaking about other things in danbury danbury westerners are on a five game winning streak we are um been really hitting the ball uh really well this year uh, we're in second place behind North Adams, and um, I was at Bristol this past Saturday just to um, 
up in the crow's nest, we, as we call it. And we really had a, um, a great day. Uh, West, uh, Danbury Westerners won 7-6. to six, And um, there was, I mean, it's, Bristol Stadium is a beautiful stadium. Uh, it's got pine trees all the way around, grandstand all the way around. It's an all-brick building, uh, steel, girder. It reminds me a little bit of Fenway. Um, and speaking of the, because it was built in 1903, and during its, you know, during that time, the Red Sox used to play uh, pickup games there. Um, Babe Ruth pitched there, uh, plus other Red Sox greats. Um, all the way up into the 80s, the, the Red Sox, you, you know, came back and forth to use that stay in Muzzy Field. It's a, you know, if you really get a chance to go up there sometime, you're, it's really nice to go look at. I mean, it's a really nice field. And uh, um, Bridget, uh, Bristol Collegiate, which is their first year in uh, NACBL, um, they're doing uh, as well, you know, they're doing well, too. They're, like, I believe out in third place. So, but, um, you know, we're... Um, We've really been uh, doing well, and the Westerners have uh, a lot of games coming up. Uh, still have uh, home games coming up, so you go to DanburyWesterners.com and look up more information on that. Um, as far as the Bristol game goes, uh, it might be uh, sometime soon. I might be showing you highlights from uh, that game in an upcoming um, of one of our other shows on Comcast here, uh, Westerners uh, Roundup, which airs six at 6.30 every Thursday night on Comcast um, and re-airs on Friday at noon. Um, we follow Sports Buzz, the Fanatic View, which uh, is uh, hosted by Scott Lewis, and I myself help out on when I'm, not, when I'm available, when I'm not working with the Westerners. Uh, speaking of Scott, um, uh, last night we were at the 200th anniversary of Barnum Fest with um, not only my uh, not only Scott and myself, but Kevin Gallagher from Time Out. Kevin Gallagher on Friday nights at 8:30. Uh, so we have a uh, bunch of um, video that we all took, and we'll be doing a collaboration, and we'll be airing this at a later date. So. Please stay tuned for that, and believe me, it was a very thrilling night to see all that come together in such a short time, but it was a beautiful, beautiful night. Um, it was hot, but we had a lot of fun. So, um, uh, you know, we'll be, like I said, we'll be showing that in uh, upcoming coming, uh, special. Uh, let's see, what else is going on? Um, concerts on the green are still going on. We will be down there um, probably. It won't be. I probably won't get down there until after the Westerners' season is over. So, um, but once the, the season is over, I'll be down there filming. Uh, my, one of my cameramen, uh, Joe Pisanelli, has been doing some filming down there, and uh, his shows air every Monday nights, Monday afternoons at noon, and Monday nights at nine. So watch for that. Um, we're also uh, we also help out on Thursday nights with the Marty Heiser show at 9 p.m. Ideas and work and beyond. Uh, so that pretty much covers everybody. Um, if you have to be a guest on my show or if you have a upcoming event, please give me at least a week to two weeks notice so I can get scheduling in and. Um, you know, we get everything situated, make sure we got a camera crew to come out. You can reach us at 203-417-7929 or 203-748-5456. You can also reach me at rbra at snetnet or rbra at gmail.com. Or you can reach me at facebook.com is where I am most of the time. That's where I stand up, stand out, or whatever you want to call it. So, that being said... We're going into our show tonight, and let's go racing, boys.
this practice session, as we said, scheduled to extend until 12.20. So a little bit more than 20 minutes remaining right now. Hopefully we'll be able to get the track cleaned up and taken care of pretty quickly and get all of our real and modified tour drivers back out on the racetrack. So far we showed 20 drivers recording times and 23 cars have been out on the racetrack. Glenn Tyler, Eric Rudolph, and Jamie Tomano had just come out onto the track when the red flag came out, so they have not recorded times. Todd Zegedy still with the fastest lap in the session at 54.031 seconds. Officially, we're showing the 93 car of Rowan Pennick with the second quickest lap at 54.821. And then unofficially third quickest was Rich Pillai. Pillai, the rookie out of Yorktown Heights, New York, in the number 39 with a best lap of 55.388.
again with Eric Rudolph, driver to 98. And he's a second generation to driver. Uh, can you tell me how you got your start and all that stuff in racing? Uh, I started racing go-karts uh, when I was about five or six at Ransville Speedway. Uh, it's a full it's a full track, but uh, they got an inner circle for go-karts on every Thursday night. I went down there for a couple of years and then uh, just uh, went from uh, thing to thing and I ended up here. And how do you like driving the modifieds? Uh, I like it, you know. Uh, I get to do a lot of traveling, you know. I'm from Western New York. We got a couple tracks we run out here, and then, uh, and then a couple tracks we run back out, back out at home. Do you have any plans to go Winston uh, Sprint Cup or Camping World Racing or what? Well, obviously you don't you don't make plans for those kind of things, but they they just kind of come to you. But um, you know, I'll be interested in doing something like that if the opportunity arises. You know. Okay, thank you very much for coming up to Lime Rock Park, and how do you like the track so far? Uh, you know, I like the track. It's a lot different than any, from uh, anything we used to, we were used to running to. Uh, looking forward to it, you know. Thank you very much for your time. Well, I started uh, in quarter midgets. My father got me started on that when I was actually four years old. So I've been uh, racing for 20 years now. 20 years? Yeah. And you finally got the ride in the Mystic Missile. How did that come by? Uh, it actually just happened uh, late in the year here, um, late in the winter. It was uh, kind of last minute, but uh, it worked out to be great. You know, we've had a lot of fun racing together so far and won some races and uh, just in, enjoying it, working good as a team. And how long do you plan on, uh, do you plan on going to Winston Cup or uh, Bush Grand National? Uh, I'm just enjoying racing right now and uh, doing what I'm doing and you know if something on the next level happens and that'd be great and uh, if not I just uh, enjoying what I'm doing. And how do you like Rhyme Rock Park as driving it? It's been a lot of fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to racing here. I uh, still got a lot to learn but uh, you know just having a lot of fun enjoying it. That's like everybody else. Everybody else is a rookie out here too. Yeah there's a lot of rookies here and uh, you know there's a few guys that definitely have the experience that we're trying to keep up with but uh, it's just a lot of fun. Okay, thank you and have a great day. Thank and you. Good luck racing. Thanks. We're starting racing, and how do you like the road courses so far? Oh, good. Uh, started in go karts, and so far the road course is pretty good. I think we're like fifth or sixth in practice, so uh, find out in the next equation, time trials, see where everybody lands. And you're going for your next championship. This is your second one, right? We'll try. Yeah. Still got a bunch of races left. And do you have any aspiration to go? Uh, uh, Bush Grand National? Or? No, I like running the modified, so I'll stay here. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to say to the people? No, I uh, hope everybody comes out and watch the race tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Molinero. I'm here at Lion Rock Park with Scott Booley, second generation driver. Third. Third. Third generation? Third. Oh, Third 1936 with my grandfather. Well, well, that's one thing I didn't know. Yep. And we got pictures in there to prove it. And how did you get your start? Did you uh, drive in go karts and stuff like that? No. I used to go to watch my father at Danbury all the time. And then uh, once I graduated high school, I said I'm going to buy a race car, and been doing it ever since. 26 years now, unbelievable. <laughs> so, just anybody wants to race, that's how you start. You buy a car, and I mean it's a lot of work and it's tough, but it's worth it. I mean I never I stop asking myself anymore. I used to ask, you know, is it really worth it? I don't even ask, because it's worth it. <laughs> Did you ever drive a modified? Yeah, I drove an SK a couple times, and I really like it. I wish I had one here, but as long as I got this, this is what I'm going to do. Maybe after I'll get a mod, because I would like a modified. And uh, now that they race here, this is one of the things that why I race here. When I was a kid, I always wanted to race here. And then I got a phone call to run in this series, and I said... This is my chance, and been doing it 15 years now here, so hopefully we'll get a win one of these days. <laughs> well, it was great talking to you, Scott. All right, great. thanks. Good luck. All great right, appreciate you. it. Anytime. Yeah, I got a picture of my grandfather's right there. My father's sitting on the fence.
Ja. Should be a relatively quick clean up here. And then we will resume the final practice opportunity for the K&N Pro Series East Division here at Lime Rock Park. session at 54, 56 rather, point five zero four. Matt Kobaluk second in the number five. Put the hood down. <laughs> Brian Duff successfully freed from the out of bounds area off in the rough, as they say in golfing terms engine running on the number seven car so as soon as they can get the hood down duff should be able to drive the number seven car back around and then we'll get our cleanup vehicles off the racetrack and be ready to resume this second and final practice opportunity for the K&N pro series here at lime rock park